See? Right here. There's a hole in my garage. Right there. Hi guys, with International Pinhole Day coming up on Sunday, I figured it'd be a cool idea to uh, show you guys how to make a, an easy pinhole camera. Now, there's a lot of things you can make pinhole cameras out of. Pretty much anything you can make light tight can be made into a pinhole camera. A lot of people like shoe boxes. You can make them out of cardboard uh, containers. You can make them out of cans. Anything you can get a piece of sheet film in and make it light tight can be turned into a pinhole camera. One of my favorite things to use is an ammo box because they can be used for a eight x 10 camera with the right size ammo box. They're deep enough, they're pretty easy to make, and they're totally light tight. Now I've already drilled a hole in the front of this ammo can, um, so I'm gonna show you a couple of things on how do we can do this. But the first thing I'm gonna say is you should really check out a website called mrpinhole.com. Mrpinhole.com allows you to enter in the size of your container and the size of your pinhole, and it will calculate your f-stop, which is really important for when you're uh, setting up to shoot. Now, a couple of things you should know about pinhole cameras. Very obviously, they have no lens. You're just going to use a pinhole. So there's a couple of things you're going to need. You're going to need some aluminum foil, some tape, and some way to make a hole. I have a tiny little push pin here that's going to be my pinhole. I've got aluminum foil here, and I've got electrical tape. Now, when you're making a pinhole camera, the focal length is calculated on the depth of your box. So now I've already gone and measured mine. Mine is 89 millimeters deep. Uh, which means that this will be an 89 millimeter lens, even though it's pinhole. And MrPinhole.com has told me that based on the depth of my box and the size of sheet film I want to shoot, the ideal size for my pinhole is 0.4 millimeters. Now, conveniently, this push pin is exactly 0.4 millimeters, which means that I will end up with a really sharp pinhole uh, that will shoot a much more in-focus photo than some of the... Uh, more blurry pinhole images some people show. Now, because this hole is very, very big, I wanna make sure that the uh, aluminum foil is on the outside. If it's on the inside, it acts somewhat like a lens hood and can actually cause some vignetting. So this is very easy to do. What I'm gonna do is just tear a piece of this tin foil off. I'm gonna stick it right over the front of the box. I'm gonna take my electrical tape and we're just gonna tape it down. Now the reason I use the aluminum foil is because it's very, very easy to put a pinhole in. If I were trying to put a pinhole into the side of the box just with like a drill bit or whatever, it's very, very hard to create a tiny pinhole. It's very, very hard to make an accurate pinhole. And because of the depth of the pinhole, it can be actually uh, vignetting that way as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and tape around the outside. And the great part about this is it doesn't take a lot of effort. It's very simple and easy to do. See, other than drilling the initial hole in the, in the ammo canister, it only took me a couple seconds. So now I know the hole is right in the middle. I'm going to take my pinhole and we're just going to poke a hole right in the middle like that. And that's my lens. Now you may notice like that, my shutter is open. So what I like to do is take just a piece of plastic and you can use almost anything including another piece of electrical tape and I like to just tape it over like that as sort of a door and then I can just swing it out of the way to take my pinhole photo. Now another thing that I like to do when I make pinhole cameras is right on the back the focal length the size of my pinhole and my f-stop that way if I put it away for a while and I don't shoot pinhole for a bit it'll be all marked off there and I won't have to go through the calculator again and try to figure out what my my uh, f-stop was. <laughs> now, because we're all stuck in quarantine, this isn't gonna be a particularly fun camera to shoot. So I'm gonna tell you a little story here and let you know why the uh, video is titled what it is. A long time ago, I had a light stand and I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing and I tripped over a power cord and I put that light stand right through the door of my garage. That left about a seven millimeter hole in my garage that I just stuck a piece of tape over and just left it there. Now I realized this week that that hole could be used as a pinhole and I can turn my entire garage into a pinhole camera. So I have some uh, 20 by 24 uh, paper and I am going to attempt now to take a shot 
using the hole in my door as a pinhole camera and see if I can shoot a quarantine pinhole on 20 by 24 film and see if we can get a pinhole image. So I'm gonna go ahead and get set up. I'm gonna change some of my camera setup so you guys can come along and watch too. So let's get started. Okay, we're in the garage now. I'm gonna walk you through what I've done. I've taken a folding table here and I set it up as kind of an easel because I don't have an easel. Now you'll notice it's at an angle, but because of the uh, extreme depth of field you get from the really tiny pinhole, you will, uh, the angle won't really matter that much. Um, then I have the hole that's in the uh, door. I've gone ahead, I put a piece of tape over it as a shutter. So that's gonna be our pinhole. I then have a couple of tubs down here that have developer and fixer in them. And I have a box of 20 by 24 paper. So what we're gonna do is take a sheet of that paper. We're gonna put it over here on our makeshift easel. We're gonna open up the pinhole. And if all goes good, we'll have a 25, 20 by 24 pinhole image using the door of my garage. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn the lights off and it's gonna get very, very dark. My camera will show you what the pinhole looks like on the easel. And then I'm gonna hang the paper and we'll do the exposure. And I'll probably have to talk you through a lot of it because I'm not sure that my camera is gonna work totally in the dark. Now, another thing I've got my safe light on here in the garage because I can do most of this under safe light because it's a piece of paper I'm using for my film. So anyway, we'll see if this works out. I've never tried it before, but hey, it's part of the adventure. Let's get started. Okay, we're in the dark now. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the pinhole. You can't really see yet, but the uh, camera is actually pointed at the easel. And you should be able to see what the pinhole can see. There we go. That's what the pinhole can see right now, is uh, the front of the house across the street from mine. Which means the pinhole's working. Uh, it looks reasonably sharp from what I can tell. It's actually much dimmer than what you can see. The camera is actually seeing brighter than uh, the eye can. So because the paper is ISO 6, this will probably be about a two minute, uh, two minute exposure. So I'm gonna get a piece of paper out and I'm gonna tape it up and we'll start the exposure and let's see what happens. Okay, my paper is up on the easel. And we're gonna get this started. Okay, it's still very dark, so I'm hoping you can see that, but we're under safe light. I've got my sheet of paper down. I got some gloves on, and we're gonna develop it. Now, because this sheet's so big, I am tub developing, which means I'm going back and forth through about 2,000 milliliters of developer. And if all goes well, we should get an image on here. Unfortunately, because I'm down on the floor, because these are not uh, small enough to fit on my easel up there, it, it's very, very dim with the safe light. It's a little hard to tell. So hopefully, we'll start getting an image here. Looks like I might be starting to get some development. This ought to be fixed enough now that I can go ahead and turn the lights on. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do that and we will be right back. Okay, so looking at it, we have a really nice looking image. Looks like my exposure time might have actually been a little long. Um, I've got a fair amount of uh, fog build up in the base. and It's not super exciting, 
but here we'll uh, we'll pick it up and we'll show it to you here in just a second and show you how big this uh, pinhole image really is. Just to show you the uh, final print in the light, uh, it uh, looks like it turned out good. My exposure might have been a little bit long, uh, but it looks pretty good at all. I was actually looking at the box. I earlier said it was a 20 by 24. It looks like my paper is actually 16 by 24, but it's still a really big pinhole image and it's kind of fun. Anyway, I know this was a little, uh, little bit odd and probably not something you'll directly try, but uh, hey, I mean, you can make a pinhole camera out of anything, even your garage. I've seen people uh, tape up windows in their houses and do this too. And it's really neat to be able to stand inside the pinhole camera and show you what kind of it looks like and what it's doing while you're inside it. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you guys make some fantastic pinhole images for Pinhole Photography Day, and uh, please share them with me. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.